The Wii was one of the best selling consoles ever at the time, and it was because of the casual audience. Really one of the greatest of all time. But why? Well, it wasn't looking at the gaming market. It was primarily focusing on casual people, those who have never even played games. Designing the console with this in mind, you have a controller that is intuitive, a simple user interface, amazing games of all sorts of genres, and incredible new innovations like motion controls. People went nuts for this system, which made sense. In the past decade before the Wii, consoles like the PS2 and Xbox have been focusing more so on raw power. What's the best specs and graphics we can fit into this, instead of what makes more unique and creative games that we can make that don't rely on the best graphics? It was a necessary change of pace as proven by the late Satoru Iwata as gaming was declining in the years before the Wii and it needed expansion. That's what brought the Wii to be made. TLDR, innovation and appealing to casuals is what won the Wii over for many. So, after living the average console lifespan of 7 years, Nintendo decided that the logical decision with this massive army of over 100 million owners was to divide that number by 7.5. The Wii U had so much just going against it. Nintendo believed that they were at the top of the game, but in reality they were just about to find out how badly they messed up with their next console. Let's see here. In the beginning, the way they advertised it made it seem like an accessory or deluxe version of the Wii. They weren't clear at all what this was at the announcement trailer, it literally just seemed like a gamepad accessory for the Wii. Then, when the system did launch, it cost more than the Wii, making it less accessible to casuals. While there were quite a few launch titles, most of them could be played more easily on other consoles like Call of Duty and Madden. There were only two first party launch titles, being New Super Mario Bros. U and Nintendo Land. In general, the system had a major lack of big titles, so there wasn't as much of a reason to get it at launch. It also didn't help that New Super Mario Bros. U wasn't exactly what people were looking for at the time in terms of 2D Mario. While the game itself was pretty good, it was very bland and similar to the other New Super Mario Bros. games when people wanted something with more creativity. While I'm not one to care much for graphics, Xbox One and PS3 were already way ahead of the Wii U. Then there was barely any internal storage in the console, and what I think is one of the biggest points, they lost the casuals and hardcore fans. The Wii was accessible, mainly to casuals, as I explained earlier. But something I didn't mention is how Nintendo completely abandoned their hardcore fans. There were still games for the actual quote-unquote gamers, but there was a huge lack of them in terms of first-party Nintendo games. Nintendo was riding off the casual market for as much as they could, and who could blame them? The Wii was one of the best-selling consoles ever at the time, and it was because of the casual audience. More hardcore gamers felt th almost thrown aside in favor of casual fans, as the majority of first-party Wii games primarily focused on casuals, so they transitioned to PlayStation or Xbox. This led to the Wii U to have hardcore nor casual fans. While I'm definitely over-exaggerating this, as not every hardcore gamer gave up on Nintendo, it was still clearly proven that they went to competitors if they wanted more hardcore gaming experiences, or they went to the 3DS which at least had more variety. And in general, I know there still are some casuals and hardcore fans alike who did purchase a Wii U, many of you all likely did included, but as I said, it was a minority. This left the Wii U with just a tiny bit of both, with roughly only 13 million units sold. Nintendo played their cards wrong, and they didn't even get casuals nor hardcore fans. It's almost like the best case scenario would be to make a console appealing to both hardcore and casual fans. This is foreshadowing! After the failure of the Wii U, Nintendo obviously had to fix things and guess what they did? Made a console with the concept of appealing to both hardcore fans and casual fans. It was a great concept and an even greater execution. The Nintendo Switch, a console that was quiet at launch, quickly gained one of the best Nintendo library of games, both appealing to casuals and hardcore fans. Nintendo had won over casual fans, especially during COVID with Animal Crossing, and hardcore gamers with games like Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey. In general, this is the perfect demographic I think every console should strive to have. It allows for a more diverse amount of games and series to be made that will always have an audience. And it allows for major expansion of an existing IP depending on what it is. As of the recording of this video, the Switch has sold over 130 million units, only 30 million away from the PS2. It's very possible the Switch can outsell the PS2, but I think it'll just sell a bit under. But then again, who knows? With Nintendo's strong holiday lineup this year with Mario Wonder, it's very possible the Switch could become the number one best-selling console of all time. Now let's get to the topic you want to hear. Why do I think the Switch 2 is going to do well? It may seem strange coming from me considering my controversial Switch 2 video back in April suggested the idea of the Switch 2 not selling well, so did I change views? What happened? 
I think he was more so looking from a different perspective, as what many were thinking of for a Switch 2 was just a simply graphically enhanced Switch, and I tried arguing it wouldn't sell too hot since just making a console more powerful isn't the best way to maximize sales. Sure, it'll definitely sell, but would more casual fans buy it? And would it come close to selling past the regular Switch? That's unlikely. The main difference now is, unlike with the Wii and Wii U, Nintendo has retained both casual and their hardcore audience. Regardless of whatever the next console is, it'll definitely sell moderately well at worst. It was very plausible for the Wii U to fail, even outside of most of the reasons of why it did fail. That was because they primarily targeted casuals, which aren't the biggest fans that keep up to date with every Nintendo system and a lot of them probably still call the Switch a Nintendo. The transition showed Nintendo that even with over 100 million units sold, Nintendo can still have a massive flop. But now with the Switch, they've not only retained casuals, but also hardcore gamers. And in general, a lot of Switch games tried appealing to both sides, which is basically part of Nintendo's design philosophy. Which means a lot of casual fans ended up becoming more hardcore fans. So now, I'd say whatever the Switch 2 is, even if it's a literal light Switch, it's guaranteed to sell at least over 40 million units in its lifespan. To sum up everything, unlike in the Wii era, with the Switch, Nintendo has retained casual and hardcore fans, meaning it's much more unlikely that their next system would be a flop. And there probably won't be another Wii U situation for decades to come, hopefully. And that's all for this video. Thank you all for the support lately, it means a ton to me, especially after how well the recent Alpha Dream video did, after personally not thinking it was that great. But I'll continue to try my best and improve my work, so look forward to what's to come, now hopefully with a somewhat consistent upload schedule.